everyone, it's Jackie at Spare Room Studio and today I am going to colour in this beautiful book Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Charles Santor. I haven't actually started in this book before, this will be my first page so I'm going to start at the beginning. The inside cover of the book does have the completed paintings of Charles Santor in there for a reference. So I have actually looked it up on the internet. I have a copy on my iPad in front of me for some colour ideas. And I have looked it up. It is still available on Austra Amazon Australia, but in the hardback version only. It's about $34, $35 Australian. Um, so whether the softback version is available still, I'm not sure. Um, but the hard cover is so if you're interested in looking up this book it is available on Amazon Australia and I would assume that it would be available in other places as well I do have my trusty little ceramic plate here to use for putting some color down I'm going to use today I'm going to get started with water-based markers and I'm going to put them onto the plate and then lift the colour up with a water brush. So that's my plan to get started and um, we'll see how I go with that. So I've got a couple of water brushes to hand to use, a pot of water and I've got my water-based markers and I'm going to jump in. So I thought being that this is the first page of the book and I'm not sure how it's going to react or anything like that. Um, to take some stress off of myself, I'm going to use um, Charles Santor's painting as a bit of a uh, starting point for colours. Um, there is a lot of green and yellow and sort of um, unusual, almost aqua blue or turquoise blue sort of colours. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to have the full range, so I'm not going to say I'm doing an exact replica of his work, but um, I'll use it for some inspiration. Now I keep my water-based markers in a big tub and I keep them in some pretty um, general sort of um, colour groups. Uh, I'm getting a few different sort of these blues and greens out to start with. And that's how I store my water-based markers. And I've got a few different brands. This one was a cheap brand here in Australia called Anko. Just going to hope that you are in focus there. Um, Anko, that's available in Kmart stores. Uh, I have these unbranded dual tip markers that I bought off of Amazon for a reasonable price. It was a huge set for very little price. It has the brush tip at one end, fine tip at the other end. And almost identical to those, I also have Primrosia mar markers. And that's what the Primrosia look like. And they're pretty much identical markers. It's just the branding. I think they all come out of the same factory, but the branding's a bit different. So I'm going to get started on the um, sky and this top part here. I'll see how far I get along with this particular video. It might be in a few parts because I'm not sure how the paper's going to react and so on, how far I'll get with these markers before I might change my mind. Uh, so I'm just going to put a few different colours down onto the plate. You may see some of that off to the side. So let's just see how the paper reacts to this. Um, it's not very heavy paper. It's um, it's quite lightweight. It's nice paper, but it's just quite lightweight. 
and that colour is just about disappearing with water. Now I don't have a lot of water there but I can see it's going a bit dotty and the water is going right through it. I'd hoped I'd get away with um, water-based markers used this way, but perhaps not. Let's have a look and see. Oh, it's going to go through, I think. I'd hoped that it wouldn't because I want to be able to have this book as a book that I read with my granddaughter. Um, but I've started now, so in for a penny, in for a pound. So please keep that in mind if you're thinking of purchasing this book and you want to work in it with watercolours, it's going to be a very difficult book to work in with water. So there will be no wetting the paper first and dropping colour in, I don't think. Now what I'm doing here is uh, the the book has quite a lot of grey scale in it and um, that one's just about dried up. It has uh, quite a lot of grey scale and what I'm doing here is just going over the top of it because I can come back in and use the greens of the leaves over the top. If I work lightly enough, I should be able to do that no problem. And also the colour that I'm using is going to be okay as a base for green over the top. So I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but it's it's gone very spotty. Hopefully that won't dry that way. But what I'm going to do is now that I've started, I'm going to um, put a very light pale base of um, water-based marker down. And... Um, then I'm probably going to have to use coloured pencil over the top. I'm not a fan of doing full colour pencil pages anymore, but um, in this particular case, it's going to be the sort of book where I'm not going to have a lot of other choice. Um, I don't own much in the way of a dry pastel. Um, I do have a cheap set, but I personally don't like working with dry pastels very much. Uh, I don't own any sort of distress inks or anything like that and I don't really want to go down that path. Um, you know, I, I'm finding it difficult to store the art materials that I already have and I, don't, I just don't need any more at this point in time. Um, I'm not to say that I will never buy them, but at this point in time I don't really need them and I don't want the stress of having to find somewhere to store them and so on so I'm, I'm not planning to go down that route in a hurry so um, this book may be one where I just have to accept that unless I want to ruin the book, then it's going to be best to work with pencils. We'll see how it dries. It might surprise me and dry differently. Um, what I will do is just very gently, I'm going to try and let's see how water-based marker on its own works on the paper. Now these have got quite a big brush tip so I'm going to put a bit of colour down there first. There's a bit of grey scale here and I'm looking at the original picture on my iPad. There's a bit of a deeper reflection here of the trees in the water. 
So I'm just going to start with that. And then I'm going to work over the top of it with the water and a bit of colour picked up off the plate. Let's see if we can get something like that to work. There's a little tiny butterfly there. Let's see how that's coping. See, it's going quite going through the paper quite a bit. That's a little bit disappointing, but I will still be able to read the words. If I'd used alcohol markers, for example, then I'd have trouble trouble reading the words when I want to read the story with my granddaughter. But if I work lightly enough with the water-based markers, um, while it will sort of be showing through there a little bit, it's not going to actually um, completely cover those words. I think all I want to do is just get enough colour down to be a base for the pencil. And then um, I will do away with the water. It's always a shame when you have a preferred way of working um, or a way that you'd like to work and the paper in the book is just not suitable for it because this particular style of art is really well suited to watercolour but if it's just not going to cope with it with the paper then there's not a lot I can do about that I'm afraid so disappointing but what can I do so let's dry that off and this section here is all grass and it's a quite a, a bright green sort of one of those sort of yellowy greens And the artwork in this book is really, really lovely. Um, without holding this right up to the camera for you, you're not going to see all of these details, but um, in the grass here, there are all little daisies. So all around here is little daisies. And um, I'm gonna have to try and avoid those. can hear any huffing and puffing in the background it's Hamish the dog although I feel like I might be huffing and puffing myself a little bit with the 
fact that this is not really cooperating with how I wanted it to be, but hey ho. We don't always get what we want, do we? So I think maybe what I will do is just um, use the water or watercolour sort of effect on these bigger areas just to give it a base. And the rest I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and do it with um, pencil, I think. It's very light colours that he's actually used in the original painting. Quite an unusual colour palette actually. I'll quickly show you my iPad that I'm looking at here. So, can you see that? Just this is quite an unusual colour palette. So if you could just bear with me, I don't really want to stop the camera because I'm not great at editing just yet, but I'm going to grab some coloured pencils and um, we'll see how we go. So I'm really sorry about that little disappearance there. I'm just going to move everything aside. And I'm just using this to protect that page there. And I've got Artex, um, Artex some Prismacolor and some Polychromos oddments other oddments that I'm going to try and use on this paper and we'll see how that goes. So this is a really experimental video for you. It's quite wet so we'll we'll work on these um, Alison her sister here to start with and as I said I'm not entirely sure I'm going to get mine exactly like the original but I'm going to definitely use it for colour inspiration so I'm sorry about that groaning dog so, so I'm just using a little battery operated sharpener there that's what you can hear and you'll see a little bit, I guess, of my coloured pencil technique that um, I don't often use for a full colouring anymore. So this is not the same as the colour that he has in his original painting, but it's very similar. It's close enough and um, I think his original paintings may be watercolour and I'm obviously not going to get the same effect as watercolour with um, coloured pencil. So there's no point sort of saying that I'm going to mimic or copy his because I'm just not going to achieve it with these pencils, especially over grayscale. So I'm using the slightly deeper, this is uh, lime green 
in the creases of the fabric on her dress. Now on her dress on the original, it looks very light and airy and it's like a bright sunny day. It's in full sun. Um, and I'm not going to quite capture that with um, these pencils over grayscale, I don't think. I don't have that level of skill. But what I'm doing here is I'm just um, having a look where he's got the, the deeper colour on his shadows. And I'm just trying to follow um, what's going on, which is not always easy to say. I must say when they um, adapt... Yeah, that, does, that looks really quite different. When they adapt paintings for colouring books sometimes and they just take a copy like this and turn it into a grayscale. Um, although this really does look like it might be one of his sketches before he painted. You can see lots of um, pencil strokes. But it's not always easy to tell what's going on. So therefore I'm not going to um, pretend that I'm going to get a precise copy of Charles's painting. So I'm not pressing terribly hard. This is sort of a um, an underpainting of sorts, just trying to get the colours in first. And then I'll decide later whether I'm going to really go to town and just make it a full pencil colouring or whether I'm going to try and leave it light and airy or how I'm going to actually um, pull this off. And then I've got um, pastel green, which is the lighter colour that I've picked up so far. You may not even see this on camera because my lighting is um, not the greatest. You may not even see this lighter colour very well at all. So I'm not being very careful. I'm not trying to blend or anything like that at this stage. So all those lighter areas are just getting the light green treatment, uh, the pastel green. And his is actually a little bit more blue than that. So I'm going to add a little bit of light aqua into here as well. So it's very much lit from um, above, but her face looks to me like it's indicating a reflected light back off of this book into her face. So the light's coming from the top, so her, you know, it's hitting the top of her head. This part of her face is a bit more shadowed, and then it's very light here and here, which is where it's getting reflected off of that book back up there. So if you're wondering sometimes when you're looking at grayscale uh, where to put the lights and darks, um, 
those little hints are there for you if you have a look at it and for me particularly with the fact that I've got his original painting here in front of me it makes it easier to um, interpret all of those things but that looks very much like what's happening it's a very unusual lighting that he's got in in his painting and had I not seen the original painting that I would not have even considered colouring um, this page this way at all. There's no tooth to the paper, it's quite smooth. It's quite odd paper to be fair. Um, if you wanted to use pastel on it, there's not a lot of tooth for the pastel to grab to. between the pencil sharpener and this is uh, sorry pale green the pencil sharpener uh, you may hear another buzzing noise intermittently it sounds a bit like a mobile phone that is the special u-butte dressing that I have on my back wound and um, it sounds like a mobile phone on silent that's getting a text message. So I do apologise if you can hear that on the camera, but I can do absolutely nothing about that. I've got a feeling that this image here is slightly different to the original painting. I think this must have been his uh, preparatory um, paint, you know, drawing that he did, and then when he came to paint it, he's made a few adjustments as he's gone along. Okay, so I'm going to put those pencils aside for now, and I'm going to use. Um, iron oxide brown just to do a little bit of initial colour in the roots of her hair and a little bit here in Alice's. Alice has got quite yellow influences in her hair in the painting and I'm not sure that I want her hair to be quite that yellow. Yeah, I'm not, um, I have to say I'm not loving this paper at all, not enjoying it at all to be fair. Okay, I want more of an ochre colour. Down here. He's got this quite yellow in the painting and I don't know that I really want it that yellow but it's 
So I'm sorry, the chat may be a bit sporadic. Um, working with the coloured pencil and keep checking this other image here and going back and forward and so on is a little bit distracting for trying to talk. And I'm really not loving this grey scale if I'm going to be completely honest. I don't feel I've quite got to grips with it. Her dress is quite yellow, so I want to keep that in mind when it comes to um, what I put in her hair as well. Okay, now as far as skin tones go, this is dark salmon and it looks nothing like what's going on on the picture. That little yip there is, um, Hamish is asleep and he must be dreaming. So grayscale um, does affect how your colours look. Uh, it really uh, does deaden the colours quite a bit, um, which is a shame. It can make your colours look a little bit dirty or muddy if you um, don't choose quite the right tone. Because this dark salmon is quite warm in, in reality, but on here it's looking not quite the same. She's got stockings on. I'm going to put a little bit here on the arm. And of course, these you know these are quite realistic images. Um, however, he's taken quite a lot of liberties with the colour choices that he's used. That they're not necessarily. Um, what you would reach for in terms of a natural skin tone. And I'm going to use a little bit of this yellow ochre um, just to Give that a bit more of a golden glow, plus it ties in with their, the base that I've used in their hair. These fingers in the original are quite light where the, um, the sunlight is hitting them directly as well as that arm there. So 
Same with here on the neck, there is quite a highlight there. Now I'm going to introduce a yellow. I've got cadmium yellow light. Oops. We've got a broken, crumbled core there. Get rid of that before it goes all over the book. Yeah, I'm, I've got to say, I'm not enjoying this grayscale. It's making the colours look very murky. So this colour is what I'm using in uh, what looks like to be more shadowed areas on Charles's original painting. And then the rest I'm going to use a much more lighter. Yellow. And the lighter yellow I'm going to use will be, um, let's have a look. I might actually start with cream, which is going to be extremely light on camera, I'm afraid, but. And I'm going to use a bit of the, um, yellow ochre for the deepest shadowy areas as well. So again, using the same colours as the hair just ties the whole thing together. Now the fact that this hasn't got a lot of tooth means that we're not going to get a lot of layers for deepening up the colour either. Okay, I'm just going to get some blue started. I'm going to go for... Deep sky blue. And I'm going for the mid-tone sort of areas and I don't want to go where, the, where it's too light. And I can always go darker with a darker blue but this is more of the mid-tone sort of area and I'm going to leave the areas that are much more lighter on the original painting. So the lighter colour I'm going to go for is um, cloud blue. And then the deeper colour I'm going to use is manganese blue. 
So I'm going quite different to what he's done on his original painting here. His is much brighter, like a... Um, what would I call that? I don't even know what I'd call it. Maybe cerulean? And that's actually working better over the grey scale than the lighter blue was. So the lighter blue on its own would not have done it. Because there is so much grey scale, whether introducing the Prismacolor white over that might lighten that up a bit. Hmm, it does, but I still don't like that grey scale under there. It's going to be a real problem. Okay, how's that looking on camera? Um, yeah, not enjoying this, guys. As lovely as the artwork is, I can't say that I'm enjoying it an awful lot just yet. I think that's partly because I'm being forced to work in coloured pencil and I don't really want to. That could be a big part of it. I think um, coloured pencil on its own may have become a bit of my Achilles heel because um, I haven't been working this way for so long. My skills are a bit rusty. And you do have to think differently with different mediums, how you're actually using them and putting them down. Right, so I'm going to leave that there and I'm just going to put a little bit of Prismacolor white on these lightest areas just to blend that a little bit. Okay, let's leave that there for now. She's got quite a highlight on her head there. Just pre preserve that highlight a little bit as well. And I'm actually going to introduce eggshell from Prismacolor onto her face here.
So I think uh, what you have to do sometimes is when you're looking at these original artworks, um, or then trying to mimic it, is um, this is a, a pretty good exercise in understanding how uh, not necessarily are uh, natural flesh or skin tone colours used um, to get the result that the artist wants. So it's probably a good, um, this is yellow chartreuse, it's probably a good um, exercise actually for learning that um, Yeah, you, you can sort of use these other unexpected colours um, to portray a person and their skin. Um, and it may not be what you would have initially reached for. So it's quite yellow, this one. Uh, how long have we been going for? Quite a while. Uh, let me have a think. What will I do just to sort of finish off this kind of disappointing video that I've got going on here? Excuse me. So I might just show you a little bit of maybe what we're going to do, have to do with the grass. Um, so we've got some daisies in the grass. So let's just do some yellow. And they're not going to show up on that grey scale very well at all. Hmm. Okay. Let's use some greens. I haven't tried any polychromos yet, so I've tried the Artex and I've tried some Prisma. Let's try a little bit of polychromos. See, maybe polychromos is going to be the pencil that needs to be used on this paper. They sharpen to a nice sharp point, and maybe that's what this paper needs. The Artex and the Prisma were not doing it because they're a bit softer, maybe. So what I'll do with the grass is where the grey scale is, I'm just going to do a slightly deeper shade of green and you can see how tedious this is going to get. The grayscale is there showing you where you need the shadows and where you need different shade. But my goodness, that is going to be tedious. I 
if you wanted to, you could just cover over the whole area and leave it at that. So if you're interested, that is um, hooker's green and grass green. Now they're very old polychromos. I'm not even sure if they still have that name hooker's green. I have a, I have a new set of um, polychromos waiting to be used. Uh, but I haven't really used the full set very much so... I'm not familiar with all the names as yet, but um, yeah, these these are very old polychromos that I've had uh, quite some time that I bought open stock, and um, it's grass green and hookers green. I think they're probably feeling nicer on this paper than the Artex were, but um, it's still not great. Hamish. Hey, Yeah, not enjoying this, guys. Just such a shame, because I've really admired this art artwork for so long. I'm just doing that like cross hatching because that's the way that the grayscale looks like it's being drawn. And I'm just going to go with that for now. I'm only using that pencil quite lightly. And then I'll go back to the grass green. I think I might have to leave it here. Um, I have a restless dog and this little contraption that I'm hooked up to uh, is buzzing a lot more than it normally does so there might be something requiring attention there as well. Um, And to be fair, I might need to have a rethink of this whole page because I am not enjoying it at all. So I might pick that up and show you what I've done. So get rid of all the other accompanying things. And you can see how the paper has started to dry and it's that will flatten out again eventually but at the moment it's curling up quite a bit so I think paper, uh, water is out on this paper sadly okay probably doesn't look too bad on camera okay let's get focused in close and you can see how different that's going to look. Okay, so that's how my page is looking with that very, very slight base of 
water based marker. And let's see if I can get this to focus in next to it. There we go. You can't really see this very well, can you? But you can sort of see the colour range, I guess. Yeah, so there you go. That's as far as I've got uh, for this stage. Uh, we're almost an hour in and started off using the water-based markers over here. And um, that's made the paper quite crinkly, a little bit wrinkly. It's come through. And then that's how that bit's looking so I shall say goodbye for now um, I think I, I probably will try and come back and finish this on camera for you I might have to do a little bit of thought before uh, I come back and, and maybe try a few things before I come back uh, but I will see you really soon so thank you for putting up with this very awkward video again um, I seem to be having a few videos lately that aren't really up to scratch, so I apologise for that. Uh, but you're learning along with me. You're seeing me uh, as I do it, as I fail or as I succeed, and I think that's probably useful for you in the long run. Okay, take care everyone. I'll see you really soon. Bye now.